Welcome to Shape by Faith with your host, Teresa Rowe. To find out more about Shape by Faith and Teresa Rowe, please visit shapebyfaith.com or visit the YouTube channel, Facebook, or Instagram. And now, here is Teresa Rowe. Welcome to Shape by Faith, where we shape our bodies and hearts for God's purposes. I have an amazing guest on Shape by Faith today. Her name is Victoria Rich. She has written an amazing book. I read it. I love it. And I would advise that you get a copy of it. It's called, I've got it right here. It's called Good Girl. And it's the raw confessions of a good girl. It's fascinating. It is. Victoria, I've never read a book quite like this before, and um, oh, I wow. think I think people need to read it because you're raw, you're real, you know, you don't yeah. mess around, you just say it as it is, and I love that about you. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. I know that you and your brother started, um, it's called the Crave Movement, and it's just exploded. Um, yes. People are coming to know Christ, and and you're seeing healings and deliverances, and I would love to also talk about that too. Um, yes, I mean it's just incredible. I've been following you on Facebook and Instagram. You're just doing amazing things for Christ. You're being obedient, you know. Um, you have a lovely family. You're married. Have a little boy. I've known your mom for years. I, uh, I've actually known you, but not as well as your mother, uh, years ago when we did a conference locally. So thanks so much for being my guest on Shape by Faith. Well, it's an honor to be here with you, Teresa, and I'm inspired by you as well. What an incredible woman you are, just absolutely killing it for Jesus and teaching us about our bodies. I just think you're such an incredible woman. It's an honor to be here to talk about the book, to talk about everything that Jesus is doing. I'm so excited. Amen. Okay, so for our listeners to get to know you a little bit better, why don't you give us your background of your faith and your family and where you came from? Yes, I'm from Central City, Kentucky, small town, a country, small little town uh, in the middle of nowhere. And I'm a pastor's daughter. I have been my entire life. So uh, when I was born, my parents were evangelists and uh, Christian musicians that traveled the United States. And um, they started pastoring um, right before I turned one years old. So there hasn't been a time in my life that I don't remember ministry. I don't remember Jesus I don't remember uh, mighty moves of God and revivals. My grandfather is a tent revivalist, old school tent revivalist that saw massive moves of God. So I've always been around um, revival, the movement of the Holy Spirit, seeing miracles, and that has always been my life. And from a young age, I have decided uh, to follow Jesus in a very radical way way. I always loved Jesus in a very real way, even as a child. And my greatest desire was to be an evangelist and a preacher. And (laughs) I started evangelizing my street as a little girl with my two best friends that are still my best friends. And we do ministry together today. Uh, So that is my, that is my life. But during my teenage years and even into my young adult life, um, of course, uh, sex came into my life and the desire for sex and um, hearing what other friends were going through or doing, what other mm. cousins were doing, not doing, uh, making fun of me because I didn't know anything. You know, all these things started to happen and I began to be presented uh, with a new way of life, what all of these other teenagers and young adults were doing. And so I began to be curious. Um, I began to want to explore, you know, what it was that they were, they were talking about, what they were making fun of me about. And I started dating some of the bad boys, which is why I wrote a book, uh, because I got entrapped in a relationship that was Mm. not good. Uh, and I looked around at all my girlfriends in the church, these same girls where we were evangelizing the streets when we were 10 years old. I looked around at them and they were in abusive relationships. They were doing things that we knew we weren't supposed to do. They were entrapped, um, emotional abuse, physical abuse, mm. just dating these duds, like these guys that were just stealing our future. So 
that's that's what the book is about. I, I just started writing really uh, in the middle of my mess, in the middle of my pornography addiction, in the middle of this relationship that was not good. I just started writing. I needed help. I needed freedom. Now, um, and that, that's what the book's about. Victoria, at the time, were you still living where you're at now or were you were you living in a different area working for that larger church? Well, I, um, yeah, at 18 years old, I moved to the Chicagoland area to go uh -huh. to Bible college and uh, immediately became very involved in a massive church there. I became a worship leader and uh, a big job was offered to me. Uh, that That's a long story. Um, I had to reject the job because uh, to be honest and real, I was being sexually harassed by the the main uh, pastor of that church coming after me pretty hot and heavy for two years straight. Um, nobody knew about it except my best friend that was there with me and some of it was happening to her as well. Um, so it, it looked like this incredible opportunity. It looked like this incredible life. Mm -hmm. Like I had hit it big as this big worship leader on TV and all of these things. But behind the scenes, I was uh, struggling with this and, and hiding what was going on with me. And um, that in that time is actually when the pornography addiction uh, came about in my life because a statement was actually made by this person harassing me. Um, you know, you're, you're a good girl. You're a, you're a virgin, aren't you? You're not going to know how to please your husband. You need to watch porn and you need to discover uh, what these things are about. So you even know what it's about. And of course mm. I knew that was evil. I knew right. that was a lie, but it got stuck in my head and it made me curious. It made me feel like something mm. was wrong with me. And, and that just began this, um, this horrible addiction that I'm now free of. Thank you, Jesus. But yes, but I had, I had to get away from that place. I had to get away um, and come back home mm -hmm. <laughs> and come back and be healed. Yes. Come back uh, to my family. And so that's what I did. And I began to write. That's amazing. You know, so many young ladies and young men um, are being abused you know, verbally, sexually, physically. And mm -hmm. Victoria, if someone's listening right now and maybe they find themselves in that predicament, what words can you give them? What should they do? I mean, did mm -hmm. you tell anyone besides your yes. best friend? Yes, I, I had to end up telling my mentor at the time that was at mm -hmm. the church. And she took care of me. Uh, she handled the situation, I think, as best as she could. Mm -hmm. I then told my parents. I think that it's so important that you tell someone that loves you, that someone that you can trust, someone that can help you get away from the situation and speak truth to you. I remember, mm -hmm. you know, I was so young, so naive um, from this small town, very protected from my parents in my home. I didn't know much of anything, just thrown into uh, this, this big mega church world and seeing things that were shocking. And then of course the harassment, but for some reason as victims, so, so often we feel like we did something mm -hmm. wrong. Yes. We feel filthy. We feel dirty. We feel like we want to hide. Like, like it's our fault, like like something, maybe something we have done has caused this. And I remember feeling that way, which is such a lie from the enemy. And the enemy wants to abuse us yes. and then make us feel like it's our fault. And he's such a liar. He is. Yeah. Um, so that that's not the truth. It wasn't my fault just because I was cute. <laughs> And young, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. that's not my fault. It, it's not your fault if if you're being abused emotionally, verbally, sexually. If you've even been raped by someone, even in your own home or your own family, maybe you're young and that has happened to you, or you're older and that happened as a child. It was not your fault, and it was evil. That's and, right. Um, Jesus wants to heal you, and He wants to deliver you from that pain. Amen. And 
we believe that he can heal you right now, even That's as right. you're listening, even as That's you're right. listening. Let's take a quick break, Victoria. Okay. Um, we'll be right back with more Shape by Faith. Everyone stay tuned. Welcome back to Shape by Faith. We shape our bodies and hearts for God's purposes. Victoria Rich is my guest today, and she is the author of Good Girl. You've got to get her book, and wherever books are sold, it's amazing. Get it into the hands of teenagers. Maybe you read it first and then talk to them, maybe do a Bible study with it, but it's incredible. It really is, Victoria. So thank you so much. Um, for being brave to write it. And I've never I've never read a book quite like it before. It's so real and awesome. And where was this book when I was growing up? I don't know, but <laughs> it's available now. Um, why don't you go ahead and share with us your testimony of your encounter with Jesus, you said in 2013. Yes. Uh, before I do, I just want to say, for those that do want to get the book, they can go to goodgirlthebook.com. Oh, okay. That's, and I sign it. I pray over them uh, and send something special. So goodgirlthebook.com. Thank you okay. so much for those kind comments about the book. Um, yes. In 2013, I had returned home uh, from Bible college in the Chicago land area, coming home from a lot of hurt, a lot of depression, having to reject a dream job. If you're a Christian, if you're a mm. Jesus follower, really a dream job, a dream salary for a 20 year old, um, having to reject all of that to really follow the voice of the Lord and follow my heart and knowing that I had to get help I had to um, get healing and get back home, mm. but I was in a really bad place. Um, addiction to lust, um, very depressed. I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. I've always been a very um, uh, planned person. I've always had big dreams and plans for my life. So it felt like everything was just falling beneath me. I, I had no idea what I was going to do with my life. And um one night, I didn't even pray before I went to sleep, and that's something I've done since I can remember. I didn't do that. I was in a very lustful state of mind. Uh, I was very angry, very depressed. I didn't even pray. I fell asleep, and I went into an experience. I don't even like to call it a dream because it's unlike any dream that I have ever had in my entire life. I went into a supernatural experience and in this experience, like dream, I'm looking out uh, this window over this field that used to be my backyard, beautiful field, and it's nighttime and I'm getting ready for a trip, putting on makeup and getting my hair ready to go somewhere. And I'm looking out this window over this field and there's a statue of Jesus, a, re a religious statue. And some of you may have seen it where he's kneeling, looking up to the father and his hair mm. is perfect with the robe. And he's he's kneeling, looking up to his father. That was the statue. And the moonlight was hitting him perfectly. And as I looked at this statue, he began to come to life. Mm. And wow. uh, color yeah, color came to his face, his hair frizzed up. Um, he didn't look anything like the statue. To be honest, he wasn't very attractive. He wasn't handsome. He was just normal. And I remember thinking, is this really Jesus? Because he doesn't look like a superhero. He doesn't look like <laughs> a model or an actor. You know, he doesn't look perfect like I thought he was going to look. He just looked just normal. Mm-hmm. And he began to walk towards me. And I can't even explain to you, Teresa, the holy fear that came over me, unlike anything I've ever experienced. Mm -hmm. It was uh, so, it shook me. I, I, can't, I can't even explain to you still to this day that feeling the holy reverence, the holy fear. I was looking mm. at Jesus, the Christ, the son of God, and he was alive. 
and he was walking towards me. I've, I've heard about this Jesus my whole life. I had preached about this Jesus, sang about this Jesus. My family knew this Jesus. But when he's walking towards you, when you can see him with your own eyes, it trumps everything that you've right. ever felt. Any, any church service, any feeling that you've ever felt um, absolutely just shook me to my core. And I wanted to just lay on the ground and disappear. I was afraid to even be seen by this 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 holy man, God himself. I, I, I was afraid. He comes to uh, the other uh, side of that window that I told you about. And he's just looking at me. And in my mind, I tell him, I miss you. Because remember, I'm, I'm in this, this dark mm -hmm. place at this time. And um, I just communicate to him with my mind. And then he takes his finger and he draws a little pink glittery heart. And it's like he was just showing me that it, it was him the one that mm -hmm. I knew, the one that I loved, and that he loved me too, that he missed me too, and he just did something that that I like. I love pink, I love hearts, I love glitter. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, after he did that, poof, he was in my bedroom. He didn't use the door, just boom, he was there. Wow. And I remember just, I remember just wanting to fall at his feet. I just wanted to become nothing. I just felt so undeserving to even be in his presence, to even look upon him, for him to be in my bedroom. I just couldn't hardly stand what I was feeling. It was almost too much. And I remember thinking, how could I have ever let anything come in the way of this man, any relationship, any addiction, any feeling of depression, any feeling of fear, feeling like I don't have a future, don't have a purpose, mm. I don't have the perfect job. And all these thoughts just started flooding my mind. And I couldn't believe that they had allowed, or I couldn't believe I had allowed those things to take my focus off of this man. The only thing that mattered in this life, my mm. Jesus. Mm. How could I have ever let anything distract me from him? And these emotions were flooding me. And it's almost like he picked me up. And he just walked over to my clothes and he began to fold them. And it was almost like he was letting me know it's okay that you have these things. Because I remember feeling such guilt that I even cared what I looked like. Mm -hmm. That I cared about my clothes, my shoes, the makeup, all these things that we care about and, and we worry about. Um, I, I just felt so much guilt guilt but he went to those things and he began to take care of them and he began to fold my clothes and it was like he was showing me it's all right that you have clothes but just don't let them take you over don't let these things take my position in your heart and in your life he wanted me to feel that he was all that mattered he was fixing my heart he was fixing my mind without saying a word just being in his presence was showing me all that i needed to be shown about this life and about eternity wow what an incredible supernatural i mean jesus met you right where you are uh, you know as you're sharing your story victoria i'm just kind of seeing the picture of myself, you know, trying to imagine what that must have been like for you and to have that holy fear and awe of your father right there with you, that had to have changed you. I mean, in yeah. that moment, like for good, it had to have changed you and, and heal you. So what happened next? Yes, it did. It did, Teresa, 100%. So then he took me to my shoes. I love shoes. <laughs> and he, look, he looks at me and he says to me the only thing he said throughout this, this entire experience. He said, have fun fishing. And when he said that, it was like his heart was slammed into mine. And I found my true purpose. I found mm. what this life is about. I felt just a small bit of what he feels for the lost. And I was overwhelmed with compassion for the lost. And... That was the beginning of our ministry called Crave. That mm -hmm. was the beginning of us having fun fishing. 
in radical ways. Uh, we threw parties for 10 years all over the United States, Mexico, into Africa, uh, Colombia. We, throw, uh, we threw wild parties with DJs and um, all that this party was was just bait for the fish. So we would draw thousands of young people, not youth groups, not churchgoers, mm -hmm. completely lost, you know, addicted, uh, lost, broken youth from the streets, from the country towns, you know, wherever we were. And we would preach the gospel at these parties. And um, that's how our ministry began by Jesus saying, have fun fishing. That's incredible. Let's take a quick break because I want to hear more and I want to make <laughs> some comments about that as well. So everyone stay tuned for more Shape by Faith. Welcome back to Shape by Faith. I'm sitting on the edge of not my seat, my stability ball, because I'm sitting on the ball, Victoria. And <laughs> I'm just like, I want to hear more and more and more. Your story, you know, reminds me of when, when Jesus said to the disciples when he saw them fishing, come follow mm -hmm. me and I'll make you fishers of men. And yes. so it just like when you were talking about it, that I could see him like, speaking mm. that to you let's go fishing mm -hmm. you know and that's yeah. what you're doing so yeah. you're going all around the world and in different communities um just helping people realize that jesus loves them right where they're at so why don't you talk um, about that crave the movement what's going on with it yeah crave crave's purpose is simply to fish fish for the lost the broken the addicted the abused the forgotten even those filled with religion, they don't know the real Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, so for 10 years, we we just threw parties. And our, our main focus was the youth, the young adults. But since 2020, um, actually the Lord visited me again and said, you have been fishing. Now I'm going to use you to fish and fill. And I believe he was talking about the filling of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And since 2020, who that gives me chills, <laughs> since 2020, we've been seeing the Holy Spirit move miraculously. We just returned from Kenya. Um, we were there for around 13 days. We took um, quite a few of our ministry school students. We have a ministry school now called Just Jesus. And so we were able to take some of our students. And so... Let me back up. The, the The miracles of Jesus have been exploding mm. since 2020 in a way that I had never experienced in my life. Um, I, I simply just began to believe everything the Bible says. That's good. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I thought, I want to see that happen in my life. I want to follow you for real, Lord. Mm. I'm fishing. I'm fishing. I'm seeing. People come to you by the thousands, and I, I want to see the miracles that you said we would do. You said we would cast out demons. You said we would lay hands on the sick, and they would recover. You said that we would speak in heavenly tongues if we followed you, if we believed in mm -hmm. your name. You said these things would happen. So I want to see them all happen. So it started with the filling of the Holy Spirit and um, crowds being filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit, speaking in heavenly tongues all at once like a wave. So for, for 10 years, it was just salvation. We saw some, mm -hmm. some miracles, but now it's salvation and ex an explosion of miracles in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that's what we saw in Kenya on another level. Oh my gosh. The first day we were there, um, we walked into a school. They were all ready for us. We had no idea that there would be 3,000 young men. We didn't oh, know. Wow. 3,000 young That's men. That's a lot. Just <laughs> waiting for us in this field for whatever, you know, whatever we want to do. So we preached the gospel and then I went for it, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And it was like a wave. Mm -hmm. From the back of the crowd to the front, they began to speak in heavenly tongues. And they had never done this before. I asked the crowd before. Um, they had never seen the Holy Spirit move in this way. They know of Jesus. They're very educated in Jesus. The missionaries have done an awesome job. Mm -hmm. But they've never seen the moving of the Holy Spirit. Um, so that was incredible. And as they were being baptized by the Holy Spirit, 
there was this one boy kind of near me, maybe about 10 feet away, was thrown by the power of God. No one touched him. No one was praying for him. But mm -hmm. while this bab baptism was happening, the power of God threw him about three rows back. And he began to manifest demons, just like we read about in the Bible, where mm -hmm. the demons cry out to Jesus and he sets the people free. That's exactly what happened. And they brought the boy uh, to us. We began to rebuke those demons. Jesus immediately set him free about after about 30 seconds, complete freedom. Then he began to speak in his heavenly language, just crying out to the Lord, being filled with fire. It was beautiful. As this was happening, another boy was thrown again. No one's praying for him. Thrown into the chairs, into the crowd. And by this time, thousands of young men have gathered to watch to see what Jesus is doing. Mm -hmm. just like just like the bible is absolutely incredible and miraculous miraculous <laughs> so this boy um he did not begin to manifest demons it's it sounded different so mm -hmm. i asked the principal is this swahili you know what's going on and he said he's speaking in a heavenly language i said praise god and then later i find out that when the boy was thrown jesus healed his back <laughs> oh Praise and, Jesus for that. Uh, yeah, he had something wrong with his spine and with the bones, and Jesus completely healed his back. Mm -hmm. And from from that day on, we began to see an explosion of physical healing. Over the next days, we saw blind eyes open. It started with a young girl who whose uh, right eye was completely gray mm -hmm. and, and blind. And um, after we preached the gospel, we asked if, if there was anyone there that needed healing for their eyes. She came up. We prayed. We prayed. We prayed. Uh, and that, that's kind of a long story. After, I mean, not, not too long, but about two minutes, we prayed. And she began to say, I see small things. I see small things. We were covering up her, her eye that could see. She said she began to see small things. By the time we left that school, her gray, bluish eye was completely brown. How incredible. Just absolutely incredible. She could see with that eye, and it was off to the side. It had straightened up, mm -hmm. and it completely turned brown like the other one. Well, Victoria, our time is up, and I feel like we need to do another show because people yes. need to hear about signs, wonders, and miracles. And it sounds to me that they wanted Jesus so much that mm. they just believed and trusted him. And I don't know if sometimes we just don't want Jesus so much because we have yeah. so much that, That's you right. know, it's like they were so, so in tune with wanting what Jesus had for them. So we're going to have to schedule great. another interview. Okay. <laughs> because our yes. time's up. But thank yeah. you so much. And everyone get her book. Good girl, the raw confessions of a good girl. And you said good girl, the book.com. Thank you. And you're going to sign it and pray over it. All right. Thank you so yes. much, Victoria. Thank you, Teresa. You're welcome. And thank you for listening. I'm Teresa Rowe. Everyone have a blessed day. Bye. Thank you for listening to Shape by Faith with Teresa Rowe. Remember to visit shapebyfaith.com to find out more about workouts, the TV show, podcasts, blogs, Shape by Faith products, and much more.